Here at the Peacock with the old Battersea Bang Bang. <laughs> How are you then? I'm all good, thanks. And yourself? All good. Now, the old Battersea Bang Bang was reinvented Made the, a other, the other week. Um, the return of the Battersea Bang Bang. <laughs> British title defence. Yeah. Uh, the Copper Box against um, Kieran Smith. Yeah. Um, people thought, I think people thought you'd win, but I think they thought it would go long. It might be quite technical, maybe a little bit fiddly. But it was almost, you know, the old Denzel came back. Yeah, I, I thought so too. I thought I was going to start getting a hold of him from like the fifth round. I thought it was going to be a bit tricky. But when I stepped out and I stepped in front of him and he stepped in front of me and I didn't see no movement from him, I thought, all right, you've made a wrong move here. And then he threw a shot at me that I caught on the glove and then I thought again, <laughs> you're in for a long night <laughs> or a short night. But um, yeah, there was nothing that bothered me. His movement. Um, I thought nothing of it. Then when he threw that shot, I thought, you've got no power, like, I'm just going to kind of walk you down, and that's what I've done. At this stage of the game, I suppose you'll take that every day of the week and not come out of the ring sort of saying, oh, I've got 12 rounds, 12 rounds in the tank, 100%. blah, blah, blah. You just take that. You? 100%. I mean, when you're in a good fight and you go 12 rounds, there's some sort of, I don't know, like, enjoyment out of it. Like, oh, you know what? I kind of like that. Like, mm. I enjoy that. But... I'll take that in the end of the week. This is the first fight I've had in a long time where I ain't woke up with any body aches. Like, I could have got back in the gym the next day, but obviously it's the camps that kind of weigh you down. So I, I, I took the week off and now I'm back, but I'm ready to get out straight away again. Yeah, so I'm not surprised, but I'll like say you are, it's only a couple of weeks out and you're back in the gym um, doing sparring. I mean, do you know something we don't? I don't know anything, but I just know, I know I want to be out again in the summer. So I only had a week off. And I'm back in the gym, first day back, I was sparring my arms. I didn't really want you to, but I'm like, no, I'm, not, I'm good. <laughs> I mean, I kind of insisted. Didn't do no heavy rounds. I was playing the anchor roll, getting for one, jump out for one. But listen, I like to keep the body flowing. Um, I, like, I, I like being active. Do you know what I mean? I like being active and I, and I can't be active if I'm, not, if I'm not ready, if I'm not training. So. Plus, you do have a tendency to drift up towards cruiserweight, don't you? Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not really, but yeah, but um, especially if you go to Ghana. <laughs> Tell uh, me something. Oh, we spoke about it before, but um, did Kieran Smith touch a nerve when he suggested, but Janabet, you know, took you along for the ride to lure out yeah. a better calibre of, of opponent? Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. I, I, I almost bit. So when Dev put it to me. I tried to not answer it at first and then he kind of like went on like, oh, what about the other bit? And I was like, oh yeah, but by then I was like, I soaked it up. I said, all right, cool. Maybe he knows something we don't. Maybe Mianabek gave him a call and told him something. <laughs> I mean, but other than that, it kind of annoyed me when he said I struggled against Southpaws as well. And the, uh, the only Southpaw I'd boxed was the best Southpaw in the division. So it kind of annoyed me, but then I just thought to myself, okay, I'm going to hurt you now. What happened? Did you read it? Did you see it at first? Well, you know, no, it... I didn't see it at all. I read something that said he said he believes he can hurt me. Or he um or Jan Janabek showed him the blueprint. I don't know how. Yeah. Um maybe he sent him an email or something. But um When something, Dev said it, when Dev something said, it. said do all your mates instantly. No, I got tagged it in it by the in whoever interviewed him, they tagged me in it. So I read the headline. I didn't watch the interview, I just read the headline. And I thought, whatever. But then at the press conference, Dev brought it up and said, oh, he said this, what do you think about that? <laughs> Should that be? So, yeah. And, th and then he, he stuck by it. He said, yeah, 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 I believe that. But I think that was his, his, his coaches, his team, telling him these things to try and help boost his confidence. And he's just going to say that out loud. But I don't think he was he expecting probably... it to get thrown at him in the press conference, was he? Sort of? Yeah, he probably wasn't as well, that's yeah. true. But, you know, Dev's a stirrer. Particularly by the person who, <laughs> You're who saying did that about you yeah. in, in the first place. You know, yeah, so. but... There was a stir -up. Do you find it best though not to get emotional during the build-up to fights and like we say just log it, remember it, take it into the ring with you rather than sort of give everyone what they want at a press conference? Yeah, I mean, I mean, sort of yeah, thing, like, as, as long as I know I can, I can control how I feel, I'm alright with that but just sometimes I do like a bit of back and forth, like I mean, like, just, just, a, just a little bit depending on who I'm fighting. I think he was a bit too quiet to be mm. kind of raging over him and saying, what do you mean by that? It, it yeah. didn't make sense, it didn't match the energy so I just thought, that's annoyed me, but I'm not going to overdo it. Let me just log it in. And then as soon as I left, I was saying to Martin and Sam, because Sam came to the press conference, I was like, I, I, I think I really want to hurt him now. I can't wait to land on his chin. <laughs> I can't 
remember you really sticking on anyone at a press conference or no do you know what it is um me and Heffron went, uh, went back and forth online a bit yeah. and i was expecting to have a bit of fun in the presser and he didn't say anything so i thought I, i'm not going to say anything either i'm not really one of those guys that's gonna like try and beat you in a press conference it means nothing mm. like, i'm not a bully you don't take anything from i don't it. take nothing from it like all of this sometimes when they say oh you looked in his eyes what did you see i saw his eyes <laughs> i mean i didn't I don't take nothing from that because one day someone's energy might be something and the next day they could be full of confidence or could be yeah, the other way around. It amazes me sometimes how many of these uh, so-called experts, they take so much from a weigh-in, from a stare down, yeah, you know, exactly. from a face-to-face. I'm thinking, you're taking so much from that. It means nothing. You're just looking too deep into it. It, just, it means nothing. It just means, it, I don't like to take anything from it. Oh, he looks confident. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. He might step in the ring tomorrow and shit himself. Do you know what I'm saying? It means nothing. So we were led to, or you led us to understand, but the belt was yours for keeps. Yes. Um, Andy Clark, renowned commentator, who you were doing some commentary with um, the week before the fight, funny enough. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah. Uh, yeah. He sort of investigated and thought of it, but you hadn't actually done a mandatory, so he sort of thrown some doubt on whether this belt yeah. was or I've not. Never, I've never, I've never you haven't heard anything. I've never heard that mandatory rule before. I've just, I've just known to, I've just, you know, known to know that if you. If you have four victories in, of that of that belt in the same division, it's it's yours. I've never heard the mandatory rule before. Um, you know, it's everyone else digging into it and investigating. I don't know why. Um, I've never I haven't heard anything from from the board themselves. It's just all from reporters and interviewers and guys that you know just want to make a story. Because at the end of the day, I've never heard a rule for anyone. I've never heard anyone else dig this deep to see if anyone else had to get to keep the belt. I just don't understand why. It's, it's, it's such a story that I've, I've won it four times and, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, it's, does he get to keep it? Uh, I, I, the board haven't said anything to me. When I spoke to Robert Smith, we were having a bit of laughter back and forth. He's like, oh, you're costing us money, then you get to keep it. And that's what I've heard. Much as you want this to be under your personal ownership, you're not really motivated for a, another defence at this stage when you look at what's on the horizon, when you look at the eliminator that's been ordered. You know, it doesn't do a lot for you now, does it? Yeah, I mean, if, if I look at my options, moving and on you, like now. you're talking about the Eliminator, if they win it, it would either be the rematch of Linus or Kieran Conway, who mm. I would like to beat up, but he's not important. Um, and then you've got what could be on the horizon, European title shot, rematch of Jana Beck. Of course, the, the, you know, the other way, moving forward is more, more appetising. That's what I want, that's going to get me up for the fight. But as long as I'm, I'm British champion, I have an obligation to fulfil, and that's mm. to defend my belt. But when I look at the other options, there's options. And that's the good position to be in. I'm never going to be out of a fight. I'm not, it's impossible for me to be out of a fight. We were saying before, it's been strong currency for you, this title. It's probably made you certainly the busy, busiest middleweight in Britain yeah. over the last couple of years. It's been, <laughs> yeah. it's been really good currency for you, hasn't it? Yeah, it has been. that like, makes it hard to let it go because it's almost like it's that insurance no, policy no, no, for you. No, no, no. No, but that, 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 that was... That was the case of me coming back from a loss. Like, okay, I've still got the British and I can still defend it. But after that performance, I'm, I'm in the shop window. I'm, I could fight anyone at, at any given time. Do you know what I mean? I've, I've proved myself at world level. You never know, there might be a world champion looking at the rankings saying, let's take this guy as a voluntary. Or, you know I'm saying, I can be pushed. People want to see me. I'm, I'm an exciting fighter. I, I don't think I'll be out of a fight. I'm, I'm an exciting fighter. People want to see me. I'm active. I, you know, I haven't been in a boring fight, win, lose or draw. Do you know what I'm saying? So. I, I don't think I need to hold on to that as an insurance policy because there's options there for me and that's the best position to be in. Ahead of that last fight, we'll mention Dev again, um, he seemed to like the fact that he got you A, talking to Nathan Heaney and B, talking to Hamza and uh, sort of basically trying to promote the virtues of fights against those two. Um, thoughts? Oh, that's nice. Do you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, like you said, it's just talking. I haven't heard or seen anything from any from either of them. You know that that implied that they want to fight. Apart from just saying on in interviews, which everyone knows, that's not what I do. I don't go online or go in interviews and say I want this guy. I speak to my team. I might phone Martin or come in the gym and say, Mark, I like this fight. Like, can we look at that? Other than that, you're just talking. But I get it now. Like, at first, I just thought, why do people do that? But they, they're using my name to build off build up their names, isn't it? Oh, that'll be a good fight. All right, cool. Send me something. Let's have a look. Let's, let's have a chat. But until then, it's just all talk. I don't really care. I haven't heard nothing from Nathan Heaney since that performance, and I probably won't if I'm being honest. Um, I don't Hamza's, really think that's his style either, though, is it? He's yeah, like, no, no, it wasn't. Yeah. Obviously, his dev just pushing everyone, yeah. and obviously, 
uh, with Hamza, everyone's been talking about that fight. Nathan, he's Nathan. yeah, he's a respectful guy, Nathan Heaney. I like Nathan. But um, yeah, Hamza's gone on record to say whatever he wants to say, and that's fine, isn't it? It, it doesn't really mean anything until I guess you know, he gets made. He's, he does say that, but then he throws in the for an eliminator sort of add-on, doesn't he? So which sort of like whether that brings it closer or pushes it further away, I don't know. But it's sort of like it's that little add-on. Isn't it, it? it just shows you who's who, Rich. It just shows you who's who because. Listen, I, I don't make these. Um, I don't make these statements and then put an asterisk on it. Like, yeah, 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 of course I would, but <laughs> you know what I mean. I don't ever do that. So, listen, my job is to fight, and that's my job. I get it. Yeah, everyone wants to be a businessman nowadays and be the business and make sure you know you're getting the right money and you're in the right position and you get something from it. And and that's fine. That 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 of course needs to be considered. But at the end of the day, our job is to fight. Don't say anyone's name if you're not ready to fight them. Wait till you get to that point and say. I'm at this point of eliminator, I'm at this point of all time, I'd like to fight so and so for it or so and so for it. And Signani, Signani, he's a fight he wouldn't mind, the European champion. Yeah, that's a fight I'd love, he's a European he's, uh, champion. been messed about a bit recently, hasn't exactly. he? Exactly, so. and I'm not one that messes about, never pulled out on a fight week in my life, never pulled out a fight in my life actually, so you know you can trust me mate, give me a shot. <laughs> on the subject of middleweights, in this gym in fact, um, your little friend Sam King. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been, we've been informed, but he's signed up with Queensbury to launch his professional career. Yeah. I mean, you'll know him as well as anyone, so we've been here for nine months, I think. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about him. Yeah, man, um, good, good, good fighter, Sam. Um, he's done a few, he's done a bit, done a bit as an amateur. I'm sure, I've, I'm, I'm sure I'm saying, I think he's won the ABAs. Yeah, so that's he that, 57, I think. Yeah, 57 yeah. fights, so he's well experienced as an amateur. Um, as a professional, he's got to find his way. The course is a different style. You know, just like anyone that turns pro, there's things to work on, settling in, sitting in your punches, learning your style. But I think he'll be okay. I think he's in, a, he's in the right place for that. Got the right people around, around him. Of course, he's got all, all the coach and staff, Martin, and all of that around him. That's, that's obviously not going to um, rush his career any more than needs to be rushed. Um, they're going to, you know, make sure he, he progresses in the gym, making sure they see his progression as he goes on in fights and obviously you've got fighters in the gym that we all like to bring each other in anyway so he's in a good place. Are you seeing him as a genuine prospect? Are you looking at of him course. thinking yeah this kid's real? Yeah no he's good yeah no definitely man I mean it takes a lot to win it I didn't win the ABA so <laughs> do you know what I mean so it takes a lot to win the ABA so um, yeah no I think I think I think he I think he'll be all right but it's, it's just it's just how you take it man it's I could say yes all I, all, all I want it just because he's my, he's my gym mate but it's, mm. it's, it's how you adapt to the professional game it's a different game you see loads of amateurs turning over and, and they just can't quite keep up. I mean, I think he's in the right place and he gets some of all, this, all the drills we do and all the sessions, all the sparring and stuff pretty well, but it's how you take the occasion on the night, the type of person you are, your character, and you know, just the, the right fights to, to progress in this sport. And it's a hard game. I think I've had a hard road. I think, you know, you, you wouldn't have guessed I would have had a world title fight when I walked in the gym, so. Useful though, having someone of the same weight around, isn't it? Like. You know, because if you can't bring sparring in, you know you've always got someone there to, to work with. Oh, 100%. And and I mean, that's why everyone I even spar Chris Bork. Chris Bork was probably one of my main sparring partners going into Kieran Smith fight. He's helping me a lot with, with the movement as he's a southpaw, moving around that way. Not big the ideal height, but well. yeah, big punch. Exactly, I've got to be careful. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I mean, anyone, but yeah, it, it is ideal having someone in your way. If someone lets you down a sparring, yours, no, you've got sparring anyway, but. It's, in, it's pretty much like when Sean was here, when Sean Phillips was here. Me and yeah, done loads of rounds. Yeah. I loved it when he was here because it's like I've always got someone to move around with. Dorian and Daniel, wasn't it? You've always got yeah, exactly. There, you've always got someone, whether it's you know a, a full-on spar, whether it's technical work. You know, you've got someone to kind of gauge your skills around, and push each other on. Mm. Commentary with Linus. Yeah, that's an unusual pairing. How did that come? Oh, he's a cool guy, man. He's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. I mean, we didn't have no need then in the build-up. He didn't say anything, you know, disrespectful. Neither did I. And that's, that's not our character. Kept in touch. Have we kept in touch? I sparred him for the Morrison fight. Yeah. I sparred him for him and Brad Pools. I sparred him for the Morrison fight. So when that, um, when um, John asked me, you know, Dan, that I usually did Dan Aziz, he couldn't make it. He's like, look, would you prefer um, Linus or Kieran Conway? And I said, oh, give me Linus. Linus is a bit cool. I mean, we spoke here and there and stuff. So, and I wish him the best of his career unless he's fighting me. But <laughs> other than that, he's a cool guy, man. I like him. Getting the thing for this commentary and the studio work. Yeah, as you now, can tell you? in this interview, I just talk a lot. Do you know what I mean? So I might as well just How many put it to percent use. did you get in? <laughs> I don't even notice what I'm saying now. I've got to watch it back and see. Denzel, well done, mate. Thank and, you. Uh, congratulations on the other week. Thank you. 
and we look forward to uh, news. Yes. Hopefully indeed. soon. Thank you. Thank you.